I'm thrilled to be speaking with Colton Ryan about the girl from Plainville and other aspects of his career. How are you, Colton? I'm great, Abe. How are you doing? Good, good. It's great to be able to talk to you. I'm a big fan of Little Voice, which we'll get to a little bit later in our in our conversation. Oh, deeper cut or becoming a deep cut by the day. Um, that's crazy. Well, let's start with the girl from Plainville. What did you know about this story before you uh, heard about the project? Um, I... I always say that uh, I, I didn't know much about it. I, I am the same or would be the same age as Coco. And so unfortunately, when this was all happening, uh, I was entering college uh, and I had just gotten my first New York Times student subscription. So I, I was getting into becoming the news junkie that I have evolved into now, but I wasn't then. Um, but more importantly, I remember at the time, you know, seeing it all over. It was one of those kind of grocery store magazine cases, you know. It was like you go to the grocery store and here's us and people and all that. And, and their faces were always all over it. So I knew about it. But I also knew that I was kind of it was like, well, that feels really. I don't know. Something at the time it was like it, was, it feels really hollow the way this is being told right now. And so I always kind of find it so interesting how when this did come up in my inbox and I was reading through the, you know, audition, whatever. And, and the log line, when I got to it, I was reading it and it sounded familiar, but I also didn't associate it. I like went, I went to the subway. I live in New York. So I went to the subway, lost service, came back up and I Googled it and I was like, Oh my God. And it hit me that the two things were the same. And, and the thing that really was the sort of, immediate jumpstart my heart to like do this was that it, the log line was so emotional and consequential that I, I, I didn't even, I didn't connect the dots. And I thought, okay, well, these people who are in charge of this, they have the right point of entry. Do you have any worry that you wouldn't be able to honor his legacy? Ooh, um, I'd worry, but not, a, no, not in that way. I mean, the only, I mean, listen, I didn't write the words, so, but I loved them. I remember reading it and, and also in line with all my own research that I did, getting to know him, which they were very supportive of and, and kind of gave me the keys to the kingdom in terms of all the research they had. And, and I didn't feel as much worry as I felt weight but it wasn't heavy, if that makes sense. It was because as I got to know him more and more, I just felt so seen myself. I just felt, I felt like head over heels in love with this kid. I like thought he was just the like sweetest and most creative and like a, a absolute dreamer, but also like really cynical and like whip smart, like really witty. And I don't know. I just, as I got to know him, I knew it would be simple because I just actually felt like I had this mission, this this really like affirming mission of like, uh, okay, this boy deserves to be known and I'm going to be the, I'm going to keep my head down and be the soldier that like gets that done. And just being that, it's it's just such an honor that I couldn't feel that heavy. You know what I mean? That's fair. Yeah. And I think one of the most powerful moments for me of watching the show is when uh, when Coco is texting uh, with Michelle and, you know, she's standing there because that's how the show shows it a lot of times. And then she just disappears and he's just sitting on a bench by himself. And you just get this you're just hit with this sense of loneliness that you don't get when they're both imagining each other right there. Did you film those scenes back to back or was it a separate process? Well, it depends. I think maybe the one you're referring is like episode two or three. It's the first time, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's one towards the later, but there were multiple scenes. Yes. Oh, of course. Right. Well, maybe the one you're thinking of also is there's in six, there's a fireplace sequence where she's there. And then, of course, we come back and he's alone again. But it depended on, if you know, quite literally the physical location. Like in the episode three, I go to her, right? I'm I'm sort of in her space. And that was also always very particular of like, who is coming to whose physical space to meet them. And it's usually because someone needed something. Right. And 
then you cut back, of course, and you see me sitting there on the steps where you'd already seen me just moments prior to this before being the one initiating the text message, being really solemn. And I hit my head and I say, I'm just telling the voices, whatever it may be, just, just to stop, you know? And yeah, I think it's, it's funny because those, those scenes are so both the, the text messages and the bits where both of us are alone are the most important honest pieces of the characters of the show because you watch the rest of it how they interact with the world like especially Coco in terms of you see him on the boat you see him with his mother these people that he like adores and loves his family and you kind of see this different person it's like this really kind of uh, effervescent kind of affable first to make a joke first to kind of get everyone you know, to make a smile. And then the minute you get out of there, it's like, or you hear him relent onto Michelle to say, I actually do feel quite alone all the time. I feel, I feel heavy. I feel whatever it may be. Those cinematically paint such a beautiful subtext onto the, everything else. Cause then you're like, okay, well, as a viewer, I know the truth now I've seen it. And so then it gets in this beautiful dance back and forth. And then you cut back to the boat again. And you're like, well, now I know when he's putting that smile on that there's a lot of hurt behind it. There's a lot of exhaustion, a lot of like, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to perform like I'm okay. And I think it ends up becoming actually like this really universal, you know, thing that we all kind of go through. And I think it's, it's a piece of the mental health conversation that we don't talk about a lot, which is the performance aspect, the deeper desire to hide it. Jamie. Absolutely. And I think it's also, I know that in Dear Evan Hansen, you played another character who struggles with mental health issues. And obviously that's done in a very different way because you're getting to know him in almost entirely after he dies, even though it's just right. what people are imagining of him. And I think right. with, with, with all of this, obviously this is a true story and it happened when it did, but nowadays something like this would happen and they'd be FaceTiming the whole time or, you know, we're talking over Zoom, it wouldn't be, I think there's something about that. And the fact that it's the text on, you know, the old phones is an interesting sort of dated piece of very recent history that this kind of thing wouldn't play out the same in, in this moment, I would at least hope so. Well, yeah, it feels both like, in a way, almost like period, because it is, it is like um, stamped with that, like, honestly, that flip phone, flip phone sensibility of like, oh my God, there's a QWERTY keyboard and they're texting, right? And at the same time, it also still feels incredibly timely because a lot of us who have gone through that phase remember it very, it wasn't that long ago, you know, that we were all kind of, we're, we're still in that pilot program. We're still those guinea pigs, like testing it out. And yeah, I, I, I think it's interesting because that case in particular was in what 2014 when a lot of us this was still very 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 new this new line of communication was very exciting and shiny and like and we were all getting into it especially young people and now it's so commonplace that unfortunately i think that this particular scenario happens quite a lot it just doesn't get the same kind of coverage because this this happened first this is this was the precedent like it's been actually pretty wild and shown how timely it is. How many people after the fact have come up to me and said, oh my gosh, parents who say like, my kid has been getting messages like this at school from someone who's, you know, saying, I'm feeling this way. I'm thinking about things. I'm and putting all this weight on other kids or, or just the idea of my, I have so many friends who are like, you know, people in entertainment who get messages every day that say, you should go and, you know, it's really, it's really tragic. It kind of happens now on a, in a, in a daily clip that, like you said, I think this thing is, is a moment. It's a period of time, but it feels so emotional still because we haven't really dealt with it. I think that's true. I do want to talk to you about Little Voice before our time runs out. I think I spoke to Brittany O'Grady for The White Lotus. Love her. 
And she said, like, I don't know about season two. I can't really say anything. And I think a week later, they announced that it was canceled. So I think she knew, but she wasn't supposed to say. I'm not going to out her. I don't know if she knew that. I mean, maybe she didn't. Who knows? It, it was just, to me, that was just, it's a, it was a very simple show. It was very sweet. But I think, especially with Apple TV Plus has so much, it's really a shame that that one, that one got canceled. I don't, I don't even know what to say. I don't either. I mean, I, I'm so happy you feel that way because I agree. Who knows? I mean, Britney's, Britney's a huge deal. I'm trying to, you know, claim my stake in the world. So maybe, maybe, maybe five years from now we'll do, we'll catch up. We'll, we'll see like, oh, five years have passed. Maybe we'll do it then. Who knows? Yeah, maybe I just, some I people will come to their good. senses, you know, and get the ball rolling on it. Never too early to do a reboot of a one season show that just ended, you know? <laughs> if you got reboot in the name, it's got money behind it, you know? So it's like, it's, it's a good idea from some people's standpoint. <laughs> there you go. So what do you have coming up? Well, I'm some stuff in the works, but I'm I'm most excited about that. I just I bought a home, so I'm I'm actually just trying to kind of get some family planning stuff going on right now. Um, trying to make that kind of happen. Of course, that's very important. Of course, I have Little Boy season two in on the books three years from now. There we go. There we go. Well, congratulations on the purchase and on your performance here. It's really great to be able to speak with you, and I wish you plenty of luck in the future. Thank you, Abe. Appreciate it.